Um, you're all here probably because you experience problems with not um, with clients not receiving emails or ending up in the spam box. Um, how can you make your um, contact form um, this way so everyone can receive your emails? And Aaron is going to give you a solution. I have, I have a solution or two. Yeah, so, so write it down. Never All right. hear again, it ended up in the spam box or I didn't get it. All right. So I'm going to go through a couple different things. I'm going to give you guys a technical background, kind of like what the problem is, why it exists, and what's causing it. Um, I'm going to touch on DNS uh, and what the problem is. Then I'm going to show you guys a plugin that I recommend and some solutions. Uh, then we'll do some Q&A. Um, like she said, uh, father of four with my wife in the back there. Um, we turned this into kind of a vacation slash work uh, thing. So we're going to spend a couple days uh, after this in Utrecht um, and then see uh, Amsterdam and whatnot. So that, that's going to be fun. Um, from Atlanta, Georgia, I've uh, been doing web development um, more than half my life now, which is, now that I think about it, that's scary. I've um, <laughs> been doing that since I was 19. Like, I built my first website when I was uh, 19 and was it 96 um, so uh, literally using um, edit.com which is a DOS uh, tool where you can edit um, you know those before text good text editors exist like VI existed but no, nonetheless anyway um, been doing this stuff for a long time and this problem has existed uh, ever ever since um, I, I run an agency called clockwork WP um, also owned an agency uh, for nine years and sold it and then spun off the hosting side of the business to Clockwork and Clockwork is, now has become more of a um, just average agency. We're really small, uh, but we do good work. Um, I'm a WordPress organizer of the uh, WordCamp Atlanta um, and we uh, unfortunately because of COVID had to cancel uh, the last one and then haven't been able to uh, figure out a way to do another WordCamp in Atlanta, but we'll We'll get there eventually, hopefully. Um, and then I do the, uh, the Atlanta meetup um, also. Um, first, I love the fact that you guys can pronounce my name, my last name. Uh, everywhere I go in the world, I get Riemann, um, you know, and I will say thank you for not making me do this in Dutch because I'm limited, <laughs> I'm limited to sentences like the girl eats bread or the boy runs, you know, things like that, real basic. So thank you for letting me do this in English. Um, so I'm going to give you, show you guys, like I said, I'm going to explain, you know, how, what the problem is and how to fix it. Uh, but I think it's not just, I think it's important to know what the problem is, not just here's the plugin you use. Um, everyone has a site, you know, where there's too many plugins and stuff like that. You don't just want to add them just, just because. Um, and so I'll, I'll kind of give you what the issue is and how WordPress works, uh, basically. Um, and way back when, back in the 90s, um, when you would fill out a contact form, it would do something like this. And I'm just going to kind of read the, the, the slide here. Um, when, you, when you send a contact form, it triggers the sending. And it says, it, when it sends, it says, hey, I have an email for uh, bob at yourcompany.com. And the, the email server will say, great, I don't get much email. Not really, but, you know, back in the 90s, you were excited to get email. Now nobody wants email. Um, and then, then it's sent. And then you get a thing that says it was received. It's a little different now when, when you send mail. Um, it now will send an email. It says, I have, an, I have a form that was filled out on the website uh, for Bob at yourcompany.com. And the receiving server, your email server, whether it be Gmail or uh, Office 365 or whatever, it'll say an email uh, for uh, yourcompany.com, let me check the DNS records. And it will look and it will say, hey, I looked at the, TX, the TXT record, the DNS record, um, and you're not allowed to send mail uh, from the web server. So we're going to block it, or we're going to going to flag it as spam, and you never see the email. Now, obviously, the form 
like the person that goes to the website and is filling out the form, they will they'll fill it out, they'll hit submit, it'll say email sent. Great, but it's sent, that doesn't mean it was really delivered, it just you know ran the, the send command to send the mail. Um, and that's the problem. I mean, how many of you guys have run into the problem where the client says they're not getting the email from the website? Raise your hand. Yeah, okay, that's why that's why you're here, right? So um, and, and it's a it's a constant problem. I host about 200 websites and I have all of them where they have some kind of solution uh, implemented. Um, and even though, even if you have the, uh, a plugin that triggers, that sends the email, it still can be uh, problematic um, and, and a headache. Um, so what is DNS? Um, how many of you guys, raise your hand if you deal with DNS regularly. Okay, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm in, I, I prefer Cloudflare for DNS. Um, you know, and I'm, I'm in Cloudflare constantly, have to be uh, in there at least um, daily, um, if not a couple times a day. Um, but uh, domain name, DNS means domain name system. Some people say it stands for DNS server, it eh, kind of. Um, but the uh, DNS system runs on domain name servers. And basically, um, most of you guys probably remember phone books. Right? Um, I know no one uses phone books anymore, but they were these, at least in the States, these yellow books that were massive where you could, you know someone's name, you have to look up their phone number. DNS is basically a glorified phone book where all you do is you, you know, type in, okay, I need to go to clockworkwp.com. Your computer will in the background go connect to your, the DNS server, whatever whatever that is, it's probably through your ISP, uh, your internet provider, they give you give you that. Um, and it'll just say, okay, I'm looking for clockwork.com, and it'll return and say, okay, it is at this IP address, pull up, take them to this server, this IP address. Um, so relatively simple, but it's that's how that's this a very simplified version of DNS. And DNS can do a lot. There are a bazillion, that's the technical term. I mean, there's probably 40 different types of uh, DNS records. Um, the ones that bolded, uh, and uh, the ones that are bolded are ones that I have run into. Some of these I've never actually run into. Um, but the ones that are in red are the ones that I, you'll, you'll run into regularly. Um, and the one that's really important for, for this are TXT records, specifically uh, SPF records. You guys familiar with SPF records, right, Grant? Okay, it st stands for Sending Policy Framework, I think. Um, and it basically, it's an extended, um, it's kind of like a wild card. With TXT records, you can shove whatever information uh, into a TXT record. But when you specify at the beginning of a TXT record, you'll specify that it's V equals SPF. And then you'll, I'll, have, I'll show you an example in a second. But the, the C names, MX records, and TXT records are what you need to be familiar with if you're trying to solve this, the problem of deliverable, um, sending the mail. Um, MX records are, um, stand for mail exchange records um, and every uh, if you have an email uh, you are using MX records um, and my old company sideways 8 I didn't update all my slides um, you know but basically sideways 8 when you uh, try to send an email to sideways 8.com um, it'll look and say where where do we send it and obviously I have them all on Google um, Google Mail, and these numbers here, 10, 20, I don't know why it's in that weird order, but uh, 10 is uh, primary, and that's your the last one. So when you send mail to sideways8.com, it's gonna try to go to this server first. If that server's down, it'll jump to 20. That one's down, it'll jump to that one, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so the lower the number, the better. Those are MX records. And they're publicly available. And if you, uh, so, I use um, MX Toolbox regularly uh, to to look up um, information. If 
if a client contacts me and says, hey, someone filled out the form, I didn't receive it, this is gonna be the first thing I do. I go and I figure out, okay, well, where where is their email hosted? Because that's gonna tell me, oh, it's Google. So Google is somehow filtering the email and not allowing it um, to come in. My animated GIF is not working. And I said GIF because that's the correct pronunciation. Um, but um, that's funny. Um, well, oh. oh, yeah, okay, cool. Now it's working. So when you send an email from the website, this is basically that run, this is what runs in the background. Um, so you can SSH into a server and type in this mail command, mail send at this subject, um, or sorry, this email address and then this subject. And when you send this mail, so this is an email that's gonna say test WordCamp email and send to this email address. Here's the subject, this is the test. Don't send email this way. And then you hit control D, I think, to send the mail and it's, and it's sent. When that email is sent, this is what it'll look like. Um, notice, I used my dad's website uh, as the example. His name was Jim Ryman. So his username is Jim Ryma. Um, and when you send mail, Google sees it as spam. You have this, this flag here uh, saying, uh, this doesn't look quite legit. Why is that? Um, well, Google does a DNS record uh, lookup and it was sent from an A2 server, which is in Michigan, um, and it and it's, looks like it comes from this A2, I'm assuming that the company's A2 hosting, so A2 server number 37. Um, and Google looks, at, looks like spam, Google sees it as spam, and so it's gonna flag it. Um, and if you look, this server A2 server 37, it doesn't have any DNS records. It doesn't have anything in here to tell me that, oh, you can also send mail uh, to sideways8.com because there's nothing, there's just nothing in here. So Google's like, no, nope, we don't like that. I could modify my SPF records, which this isn't the best way to do this, but we could drop in that A2 S37 dot a2hosting.com or whatever that address into my SPF record, my TXT record. Um, but what if I change the server? What if I move, you know, the server to something else? Um, you know, I, that's a, a thing that we don't want to do. Instead, we're, we're going to recommend using something like SendGrid um, to allow mail from SendGrid. Um, so that's that's kind of the, the problem. Um, in WordPress, basically uses that same command. So you saw when I was, the animated GIF that didn't work at the beginning, that um, when it sends mail, when you fill out a contact form on the website, you're basically hitting this, you run this mail function in PHP. This is, um, this is WordPress's mail function uh, in the source code. And basically it says, this is a comment right here, if you don't know the two slashes means, this is just a comment and it says, set to use PHP's mail. So WordPress doesn't really do anything with email. It passes it on to PHP itself, and PHP will in turn look on the server for a program called SendMail, that mail, where you type in mail space dash s with the subject and the email address. Um, that's what, that's what WordPress is doing. WordPress is super smart though because it has hooks and filters um, where you can hook in and break things if you don't know what you're doing. Uh, but you can also, it allows you to hook in and uh, not bypass but take over that function. So you're not dependent on your weird um, web server um, configuration. So you, we were allowed to hook into it. Does that make sense? All right, um, one more screenshot here, just showing that the PHP, um, so when this, this says that PHP's mail, um, or I'm sorry, WordPress uses PHP's mail, and then PHP's mail 
is literally using that same command to send mail. So it just drops to the command line and sends it kind of in the background. Um, you don't really see that that's happening when you fill out your form and hit submit, but that's, that's what all is going on in the background. I'm gonna get, check my, all right, I'm doing good, or well. I would love for my computer to work though. I think that animated GIF is freaking it out or something, I don't know. Um, so one of the problems, um, I don't use, um, I have all my servers on DigitalOcean, um, so I, I set them all up uh, using uh, Nginx and MySQL and whatnot, um, but I never install mail on my server um, because anytime a server gets hacked, all they're trying to do is use it as a mail relay. Um, so that's why I completely, I just don't install send mail on the server at all. Um, and servers like WP Engine, um, as great as they are, you know, they, they limit how, they have mail on there, but they have an article on their website saying, don't use this to send mail, um, because it's not, it's not reliable. Um, and they recommend using a third-party tool. But if you if you don't have if you have a server and mail's not installed, it's going to look like that 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 uh, form was filled out and sent. But there's nothing happening in the background. Um, so uh, why do you need a solution? Well, mail not might not be installed. Um, Mail probably is going to look like spam, and even if you have it all set up properly, it might still look like spam, and you have to deal with some kind of white filter, um, whitelisting um, thing. Um, your DNS is probably not set up to, at least by default, to connect to your uh, your server. Um, and then if you set it up where you specify the server's uh, address, if you were to move uh, to a different server, you'd have to make another. Uh, DNS record change to fix the problem. Um, so, what do you do? You can ignore it. Um, I have a lot of clients that are like, "Well, I, my website never sends mail. Why would I? Why do I need a solution?" I'm like, "Have you ever forgotten your password? You know, it's really nice to make sure that the password reset function works." Um, now, there are some where you know it's a blog where. They have no comments, no nothing, no no reason to have email. And I, I have one client like that where it doesn't send mail. But the other 200 clients, uh, they need they need it to send mail at least for um, the I forgot my password uh, function. So check my time. All right. Um, all right. So here's the solution, guys. So wake up. Um, in the world of Yoast, where Yoast is the most popular plugin, uh, and that's the one you should use, right? Um, I would say if there's a plugin out there, grab the most popular one because it's the best. That's not necessarily true. Um, uh, Yoast is super popular, and there's some other plugins. This this one here, this plugin for uh, it's called WP Mail SMTP. They have two million active installs. Um, and by the way. The plugin that I'm going to recommend, I don't know the dude. You know, I'm not promoting my own plugin or, or anything crazy like that. I kind of found this plugin and the solution uh, by trial and error, like almost every WordPress uh, you know builder out there. You know, you just try to plug in and it worked. Um, this is the plugin I recommend, though. Um, this one is sorry if the person here that writes this plugin is here. Um, you know, but but it's, it's, it's very nagware, um, it's very limited, and now it does connect to some of the third party uh, things out there, but if you want a log, you want a log of your email, you're gonna have to pay for it. Um, if you need a, a fallback, they don't have that functionality in the free version, stuff like that. This is the one I recommend. It has 300,000 uh, active installs, and it is wonderful. Why is it wonderful, Aaron? Well, I'll tell you. Um, it has, um, it's updated regularly, I just happened to take this screenshot a couple, a week ago or so, um, 
it, he's maintaining it, um, but it, it allows me to connect to anything that I, I've ever wanted to connect to. So I can use just SMTP, so meaning SMTP, meaning I can drop in a username and password to send mail. Um, I can also use the solutions that I recommend to all my clients. I can use SendGrid or Mailgun if I want to. Um, another thing that's really great about this, we can set up a fallback, okay? So if your SendGrid or a Mailgun uh, solution doesn't work, um, it'll, we can set it up where it'll try the second option. Just drop in the username and password and the port number and all that stuff, and you're up and running. What else does it do, Aaron? Well, it does something amazing. Um, it does Slack notification. So if you email one, option doesn't work, option two fails, you can set it where it'll send a Slack message uh, to your Slack, which is super handy, because I have one client that the whole system runs on email, and if they don't, yeah, I've got it, thank you. <laughs> um, um, it's, yeah, okay. Um, just check it. Um, that, that to me is just awesome that I can get Slack notifications uh, from it. Um, and I've gotten it once. Uh, I had the first account set up and uh, SendGrid had freaked out and it wasn't sending and then someone had reset the password for option two and so I got a Slack notification. Um, to me, that's, I could almost sell that to a client and be like, yeah, well, hosting's $30 a month, but if you pay $40, we'll get you, you know, Slack notifications and I'll let you know if things break. You know, something to that thing. I'm just saying the plugin's pretty solid. Um, and then the last thing that the plugin does that I think is great is it does logging for free. Um, so, and it not just does logging, you can, if you realize that, oh, the past three days, I have this log of where it failed, 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 failed. I can go and fix the problem, and then I can go back to those emails and hit send, 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 send. The client wouldn't even know, you know, that it didn't, it wasn't working, you know, if it's, it's your fault. Um, you know, so that plugin's pretty awesome. Um, now, Mailgun has um, their own plugin that'll get the job done, where you just drop in the API key. Um, but it doesn't do logging, and it doesn't do all the other things that that plugin does. Same with SendGrid. SendGrid has a plugin, um, but it's super limited. Um, and that's what I first started using, um, is those two plugins. And then I found this plugin that I'm promoting here, um, selflessly. Um, and then, basically, to set up something like SendGrid or Mailgun, it normally takes me about 15 minutes or so if um, if I can if I have access to the DNS records. Um, you know, it takes about 15 minutes to set these up. It's going to require dropping in um, something real simple like include Mailgun, you know, to your TXT T records. Um, you might have to set up a DKIM record. You set up a C name and two MX records, and you're up and running in 15 minutes. Um, so Mailgun is relatively cheap. I have um, one university uh, using it. They send out about 3,000 emails a month, and it costs like $3. Uh, you know, something, something really cheap. SendGrid is, can be free. Um, if I remember correctly, it will uh, send, SendGrid is free as long as you don't go over 100 emails a day. Which, I, you know, I don't, I can't think of a website. It had to be, it'd be a very popular uh, website to to push that uh, 100 a, a day uh, limit. Um, and why? Another reason why to use a third party um, when even if if you're using SMTP, uh, just you know, a username and password to send mail. Um, once you hit send, you have no record of of anything. Um, so it makes it really hard. You I, telling a client, like, I don't know, it's it's sending, you know, like I see it, it's sending, good luck. You know, that's not very helpful. SendGrid and Mailgun both will go through and, you know, say, 
I tried to blur that out and failed. Anyway, um, you know, it, it goes through, it says, it was processed at this time and it blocked, and here's the reason why. Um, and that's, that to me is one of the hardest parts. Like, I don't understand why it's not working, it just doesn't work. Um, you know, having that uh, plugin active, or not that, yeah, having that plugin using either Mailgun or Syngrid, they give you a great tool to look and see and solve the problem. And if you're a total geek, it's a great book <laughs> that you can read that I, I read like 20 years ago uh, when you had to do this stuff like super manually. Um, I had to, well, I'm not going to go into it, but um, that book, like if you want to be a DNS expert, that's a great book uh, to read. Um, and here is a, um, I just found out about this one um, a, uh, about a month ago. Um, we were having DNS issues with email and um, I talked to a client and I talked to, they said, well, talk to my IT guy. And the IT guy said, did you send an email to verifier.port25? I'm like, what, why would I have done that? Um, and, and he said, oh, it's amazing. Um, and you can tell, so once I have everything set up with SendGrid um, or Mailgun, I'll send an email um, or get the client, you know, this this example here, this is Clockwork WP, this is me running and testing my own um, email. Um, but this tool will go through, it'll tell you, it'll check your SBF record and make sure it's set up properly, it makes sure your uh, DKM record, and it, this page continues on forever. Um, thank you. Yeah, I'm almost done, I got one more slide, so. <laughs> I also have a blind spot where I can't see over here too, so I probably should have been on the other side. So, um, but that tool, I think that's a great tool. I mean, so if everybody wants to, go send an email to that just to see see if I'm lying or not. No, um, that's a, that's just a great little tool that I found, um, and that's it. Um, so.